Hello and welcome back to Nunley Math. I'm your host Aaron Nunley. I appreciate you joining us here today as we look at solving exponential equations. Um, now if you're following along in our series of videos this might seem as kind of a sidestep or a diversion for us um, because we've been talking about exponential functions and exponential growth but I assure you this is going to connect back into those ideas. In fact it's going to be necessary for us to understand this in order for us to um, to do some of the things we're going to want to do here in a couple of days. So just just go ahead if you would and indulge me as we take this little sidestep out of the way um, and just hold on to the promise that I am going to bring this back around here in the next of our couple of videos. The good news for us today is the idea of solving exponential equations is much easier than it appears at first. Consider 3 to the x plus 8 equals 3 to the fifth. Now we consider this to be an exponential equation because the x is in the exponent. So if we're going to solve, we're going to find what value can we put in here for the x that makes this true. Now the good news for us in this particular example is that both of these have a base of 3. So this is 3 to some power and we're saying it's equal to 3 to some power power. Now, when the bases are the same, that actually helps us out quite a bit because in order for these two expressions to be equal to one another, this first exponent, this x plus 8, has to have the same value as this exponent because 3 to something is always equal to 3 to the same thing. That allows us to change this from something that seems to be a complex equation into something that's very simple using this one simple strategy. If the bases are the same, the exponents must be the same in order to make the values equal. In other words, I can look at this and when I realize these are both 3, I can actually ignore the 3's and just deal with the exponents. So I can set up a much simpler equation that says the x plus 8 must be the same thing as a 5. Because if this is a 5, 3 to the 5th is equal to 3 to the 5th. So we need to find out what makes this a 5 by solving this simple one-step equation. Now, hopefully you recall that in order to get rid of a plus 8, we need to use the property of equality and subtract 8 from both sides. I am not going to show that step simply for the sake of maintaining space here. Hopefully you're comfortable with that at this point. But if I subtract 8 from each side, I get x equals negative 3. If that was uncomfortable for you, then probably you're going to want to go back and watch one of the other videos in the series about solving single step equations. Now, just to show you that this x will have a value of negative 3, or the equation is true when x has a value of negative 3, I'm going to take that original equation, this one right here, and I'm just going to replace that x with a negative 3. Because if I do that, I end up with an exponent of negative 3 plus 8, which does in fact simplify to a 5. See how easy that is? Let me show you another one. If I have 6 is equal to 6 to the 2x minus 3, since both of these have a base of 6, in order to find the x, I just need to find out what is going to make this expression equal to the exponent on this expression. And of course, this is 6 to the first power. So I take this exponent, set it equal to this exponent, and solve. Once again, this is a two-step equation. We ought to be very good at solving these by now. We're going to add four to both side, or three to both sides to get a four, and then we're just going to divide both sides by two to get a two. And of course, I always like to keep my x's on the left, so I turn that around. This will only be true if x is a two. And once again, I can check that. If this is six to the first, and I go up here and I take this expression and replace the x with the two, 2 times 2 is 4, minus 3 makes both sides 6 to the first. Now, as you're starting to feel more and more comfortable with this, you may want to pause the video, try these on your own, and then go back and watch the, vi the video to see if what I'm doing is making sense. I'm going to do this next one much faster. Um, notice this is 10 to the 3x. This is 10 to the 2x plus 3. Since the bases are the same, I just need those exponents to be the same. Subtract 2x from both sides, and you get x equals 3. Once again, I can take that original equation way up here at the top, replace those x's with 3's. 3 times 3 is 9, 
2 times 3 plus 3 is 9, and the sides do match. 2 to the 2x is equal to 2 to the 6. Once again, I'm just going to set those exponents equal to each other. Divide both sides by 2, I get x is 3. Once again, I can check that by plugging a 3 in for x and simplifying the two sides do match. Here's one. The 2x is going to have to be equal to the x plus 1. I'm going to subtract an x from both sides and get x equals 1. And you can see the check on that as well. Last one of these. 7 to the 3x plus 5 is equal to 7 to the x plus 1. There again, the bases are the same, which means that this first exponent expression needs to have the same value as this exponent expression. So the 3x plus 5 has to be equal to the x plus 1. I subtract 1x from both sides using the property of equality. I'm going to subtract 5 from both sides using the property of equality. And we'll divide both sides by 2 using the property of equality x must be a negative 2. Again, taking this original expression, or this original equation, sorry, plugging in a negative 2 for the x's, 3 times negative 2 plus 5 is negative 1, negative 2 plus 1 is negative 1, both sides are going to give me 7 to the negative first power. There again, I don't think you're going to find that to be too overly complex when we have exponents that are the same. Now, it does become a little more complex when the exponents are different, but not overly so. Take a look at this. If I had 5 to the x power equals 125, many of you can probably look at that and know the answer right off the top of your head. However, um, I am going to, to um, go ahead and walk through this a little bit longer way because I want you to see a principle that's going to help you on some more complex problems. Since this is 5 to the x power and this is 125 to the first power, I know that my bases are different. That makes this much more complex. However, when I look at this 125, I happen to remember that 125 is 5 to the third power. Now my exponents are the same, and I can use the same principle I used on the previous slide. The exponents have to be equal to each other. So this one must have x equals negative 3. And of course that works out really well, because if I plug that in at the top, 5 to the third does indeed equal 125. Now, some of you were probably able to look at the 25 and 125 and just recognize this, but I wanted to walk through this idea of changing this base into an exponent form to make it easier to solve, because on the more complex problems, you're going to have to do that. Take a look at this one. This one has a base of 4 and a base of 2 a base of 4 and a base of 2. In order for me to solve this using the method we used on the previous slide, those bases need to match, which means I need to take one of these or both of them and write them in an exponent form. Now I can look at this and see, oh well this is 2 to a power. I can rewrite 4 to an exponent as well. In fact, if this is already a 2, I know that 4 would be the same as 2 squared. What I've done is take these bases and make them match. Now I'm going to use my power of a power property. And it looks just like the problems on the previous slide. Again, when the bases match, that just means the exponents must be equal to each other. And this is a simple equation to solve. Property of equality subtracts x from both sides you're left with x equals negative 3. If I were to check that, 4 to the negative third equals 2 to the negative third to the negative third, or to the negative third minus 3. Negative 3 minus 3 is 2 to the negative 6. 4 to the negative third becomes 1 fourth to the third. Remember, a negative exponent says use the reciprocal. Same thing on the negative 6, it says use the reciprocal. 1 to the third is 1. 4 to the 3rd is 64, 1 to the 6th is 1, 2 to the 6th is 64. This does indeed work. Again, as you get better and better at these, you may want to consider pausing the video, trying them on your own, and then playing the rest of the video to see if your answer matches mine. I look at this and I see 9 and 27. 
9 and 27 both remind me of a base to a certain power. What base raised to different powers could give you 9 and 27? Well, hopefully you realize that 9 is 3 squared and 27 is 3 to the third. Because if you realize that, you can make your bases match. The power of a power property says this should be multiplication and this should be multiplication. So I get 2 times x plus 2 equals 3 times x. Distributive property, property of equality, and then this is the uh, symmetric property, symmetric property. Once again, if I plugged 4 into my original equation, I get 9 to the 4 plus 2, which is 6. 9 to the 6 is 531,441, and 27 to the 4th, ironically, is the exact same thing. Now, obviously, I did not do that uh, by hand. I typed that into my calculator, uh, but I want you to at least see that it does still work. The rest of these I did not do checks on. I will leave that to you, but certainly um, they, they should come out the exact same way. Um, take a look at this. What can we do here? This one's a little tougher because that one half and that four both have to be written so they're the same exact base. Here's a nifty little trick you can try. One half is two to the negative one. Ah, sneaky. Four is two squared. Now your bases match. Power of a power property says multiply those together. And the um, the rule we learned here was if the bases match, just match the uh, make the exponents equal to each other, and solve. X equals negative two. How about this one? When I look at this, I see one sixty fourth as sixty four to the negative first power, and I happen to know that sixty four is four to the third. That means 1 64th is 4 to the negative third. Again, the bases match. Set the exponents equal to each other. Property of equality to get your solution. How about this? 4 to the 3x, 8 to the x plus 1. Look at those bases, 4 and 8. Those should both remind you of something to a power. Hopefully you realize 4 is 2 squared, 8 is 2 to the third. I'm going to take that 2 times 3x, that's the power of a power property, to get 6x. 3 times the x plus 1, that is the um, power of a power property. And then I distribute the 3. Property of equality to subtract 3x from both sides. Property of equality to divide both sides by 3. You get x is equal to a 1. Last example looks like this. A um, couple different ways that you can do this. I actually like getting rid of this fraction, so I'm going to make that 3 to the negative first. And I'm going to take this 27 and make it 3 to the third. Notice you have negative 1 on the inside, x minus 1 on the outside. The power of a power property says those get multiplied. Distributive property. Property of equality to subtract 1 from both sides. Property of equality, divide both sides by negative 1, and there is your solution. Hopefully that's helpful to you. Again, this will come in very handy with some things we're going to do over the next couple of days. Um, but I don't think you're going to find this to be overly complex of a process. If you do, go back, watch it again. The trickiest part is going to be figuring out what to turn these bases into. Sometimes that can be a little complicated if you're not real comfortable with your perfect squares and perfect cubes and so on and so forth. But with a little bit of practice, that should come to you. Thank you so much again for taking the time to, to be with us here today. Make sure you hit that that like button. Make sure you subscribe. Leave us a comment in the comment section. Make sure those notifications are turned on so that you don't miss any of the upcoming videos from Nunley Math. I wish you all the best. Have a great day. Take care. Bye-bye.